Ach, das Mike's Daily Podcast. FFFEPISODE 1268-1268. Hello, it is Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcaster Valley Mont. I was born in 1968. What a year that was. I don't know. I was just a little pile of blubber. Now I'm a bigger pile of blubber. Today, we're going to bring you a wonderful segment called Into an Interview. Mike's Daily Podcast. With Terry Ashkenaz, the amazing singer and guitarist of the band Fake Your Own Death. Mike's Daily Podcast. And we discuss his album that is going to come out soon. And then we'll talk to John Deere, the engineer. He is a loon. No, he's a smart guy. It's his mate, Floyd the Floorman, who's nuts. And Shelly Shuhart. She's there too. D- despite this being a rut. Mike's Daily Podcast. I have a nice butt. I'm rhyming very well today. I'm rhyming all kinds of Mike's new words. Daily this is exciting. Podcast. Thank you for listening to the show. Yeah. I know this has been a crazy, crazy weekend that you just got out of. With all the immigrants being thrown out of the country and the airports having a big party. Oh, let me just walk in. Hello, Matthew. It's Shelly Stewart, gift shop supervisor. I was at the airport protesting. You were? What did you? What were you? What was your? What did your sign say? Trump is a bit big butt. Trump is a big butt. Okay. I'm not in a rut, Mike Matthews. That's good. Look who else just walked in. Oh, Mike, this is Floyd the Floorman. And this is John Deere, the engineer. Don't say that Floyd is nuts. He's my... You're what? My honey bunnies. Ah, honey bunnies. Those are scary. They, they're all over the floor, and then you have to get a vacuum. And I understand what you're saying, John Deere. Thank you, Mike Matthews. <laughs> And here's today's podcast picture. The podcast picture. Yes, we're running through everything really quickly because we got to make room for Terry Ashkenaz is of Basil the Boxer standing in the bay. We're over in Benicia. Over there again. No, we weren't there. We haven't been there in a while because it's too cold to go to Benicia these days. But I love Benicia and I like saying the word Benicia. And there's a great band up there called Dead Hat Cat that I need to interview them again soon. But 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 that's neither here nor there or over there or anyway or a uh, cafe anyway. Usually I have that sound effect that goes anyway. Where is that? Anyway. Thank you. So see that picture now at mikesdailypodcast.com and all those past podcast pictures. You can help out the show through the Amazon link. Click on that and buy whatever it is you're going to buy, and that helps us out. There's also the PayPal. You can help us out that way, become an inglorious Mike's Daily Podcaster. And there's all the past podcast pictures, past interviews. You can hear the past interviews I've done with Terry Ashkenaz. I am about to do something very, very... I'm, I'm going to take a project... What I want to try and do is alphabetize all the interviews I've done. Right now, they're in chronological order of the day that I interviewed them in the year, etc. Now I need to alphabetize, and I'm not looking forward to that because now we got to bring in spreadsheets and Excel and all that crap, and I'm just not looking forward to it. So I, I'm about to embark on that. I really enjoyed Julie Louise Dreyfus's speech from the SAG Awards. Did I watch the SAG Awards? No. Do I watch any award show? No. I'm done with award shows. I watched them when I was a kid. I used to love watching them, but now I get uh, I, I want to pull my hair out, which I don't have anymore. So I guess what I'm saying is I hate award shows, but I do like the little clips, the ones that get through that are highlights and Julie Louise Dreyfus was talking about being the daughter of immigrants and that she does not approve of what's going on with Trump and all the bans he's doing 
and the right is saying, oh yeah, but what about the security of the country, blah, 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 blah. Well, the fact is, is Trump is doing so many executive orders in his first 100 days, which he warned us he would do, but at the same time, he's scaring the crap out of us. He's out of control. He's doing so much, he's scaring John McCain. John McCain, who is going to be our president if there was no Obama to kick his butt. But he he ran for, he's a very well-known Republican and he is even, what the hell? So anyway, we get into a little bit of that, Terry and I, when we discuss Terry's music and his songs. And, and I think you're gonna enjoy some of his music. So let's get now into, into an interview. And if you'd like to comment, you are welcome to do so. We listen to your comments and your not-so-comments in our segment, Emails from Email and your comment, not-so-comments. And you can call 336-MM-DAILY. 336-MM-DAILY. Or you can email me, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. Now, into an interview. Into an interview. Terry yeah. Ashkenaz. Yeah. Doing good? Woo-hoo. You got a rousing applause here at Cafe Anyway and Mike's Daily Podcast. Yeah, you you do, you deserve every bit of at applause, Terry Ashkenaz. That's uh, it's nice because it's been a rough uh, month. Oh no! Is it because of Trump? It's every day, it's it's, it's, it's the, the the end of a, a, a optimistic view of the world. Now now, hang in there, Terry. All right. You got to keep making your awesome music. Fake your. Oh, we're trying. We uh, we just finished our record. It's um, just got mastered, and we're starting to um, send it out to a few people. And uh, it'll be released on February fourteenth. That's Valentine's Day, isn't it? Yeah, I wonder, yeah. I wonder if somebody coordinated that. <laughs> I don't know if we're such a val. I don't know if we're a date night band. <laughs> <laughs> now you know what though I think your music is rocking And you bring your woman out to one of your shows And she likes the rock music And the, and the kind of the the Testosterone involved And then she wants to go back to the Your place and bang Well I mean you heard it here <laughs> Mike's getting banged to take her on death She wants That's to good. bang I'm a drum the love. I want to spread the love Spread the love. It's all about love. We need more love in this world, don't we? Absolutely. After yeah. all, all the craziness. Now tell me, what's it like? You live in San Francisco, right? Actually, I moved to Pacifica about a year ago, but just outside of the city. Yeah. Yeah, you're really, you're still really close, but you're near the ocean now. Right. Right. You're like on the water. I am literally on the water. It's cool. Right the- in a little house. I got a little studio in my garage. Oh, Going that's surfing, you know, like hang out. it's really windy and cold, and there's sharks, and it's awesome. <laughs> I love, I love when you talk and you get really, really dark, and then you go, "It's awesome." <laughs> it's, but you know, it is awesome because I've never seen waves bigger than the ones I've seen at Pacifica. I remember one time driving up that main street there and looking at, and these huge waves were coming down, and I was, ah. Oh. But so right now it's uh, the Mavericks time, right? With the huge surf contest. Oh, that's uh, right. It's about to start. And so this is the time when they're the biggest. Last week there was 30 foot waves, like at, where I live at, at Shark Park. Um, it's insane. Like, there's nobody in the water. It's like, you'd have to be a crazy person. It's oh. really windy and choppy, too. So, like, this is, you know, it's a death trap. But your music always reminds me of sort of the best of. What came out of the 80s alternative in, a, in the alternative vein What I'm trying to say Terry Is you've got this mm-hmm. Your guitar sound You've created this wall And then your voice has this You've got that lower register So you kind of give me that Iggy Pop feel That that when David Bowie later years The almost a tad bit of The Depeche Mode Is almost in your voice there But, it, but it, yet it's well, that's, that's- it's okay, only, that's three awesome comparisons. I, I, I'm loving this. But yeah, you, you know, and almost uh, Joy Division esque. You know, he sang. Yeah. I, I can't remember his name, but he sang with the low voice. I, uh, Ian Curtis. Thank. 
Thank you. I remember, I don't know, I'm the Bern, I always remember Bernard Summer, but I, Ian Curtis. Yes. What, what a voice that guy had. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. No, I mean, like, we're definitely, you know, that's, that's the era of music that kind of brought us together musically, you know, the Scott and Adrian and Izzy and I. But the, um, the reality is, like, we definitely draw from The Cure and from The Jam and from um, Tears for Fears and, and, like, you know, these 80s bands that are very diverse. They don't all sound the same. And the thing that I love the most about them is that they don't sound the same, that there's, there's something, they're just not afraid to, like, invent a sound. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I definitely go for that wall of sound stuff. Like, you know, uh, Jesus and Mary Chain and Gang of Four and uh, oh, Love yeah. and Rockets. I mean, that, that's right in my strata. Love and Rockets. Oh, yes. Hey, and then did you like the album Disintegration by The Cure? I love it. And that had some cool that, harmonics and whatnot. Yeah, I think that was like kind of a climax for them. And, you know, I mean, like Pornography is a great album, too. And like, Head in the door, but then disintegration kind of took them to another level, and then I didn't like it as much after that. But yeah, they're still you know great songs that they're still coming out today. I mean, the Cure is you know they're they're ahead above everybody else. There's something completely rare about them that nobody can copy. But tell me about your new album called The Wake. The Wake, um, we it has multiple meaning for us, um, but. The reality is, you know, I moved to the beach and I started writing these songs like as I was kind of hanging out either on the beach or on the cliffs looking down the beach around my house. And there's just something like about the solitude of the ocean. Like when I'm out there, you know, there doesn't, it's almost like being in a movie. You're not really sharing the experience with the other people around there. It's just you and the ocean and you're just, you're just sort of, it's very contemplative. And so Death Star on the Sea was the first song that came up for me. Um, and really, I was just looking at this tiny little tugboat out there. You know, for all I know, it was just, you know, one guy fishing or pulling up crabs. I don't know what it was. But it was way out on the horizon and just sitting out there alone. And I started kind of embanging this story of feeling like everything had come crashing down in your life. And the one thing you knew you could still do is just get out of the water because no one's going to give you a hard time on the water. It's just, it's just you and nature, basically. You, you and God, the ocean. And you sort of, um, everything comes up for me in a, like a Johnny, um, uh, Johnny Cash sort of way of like death and religion and, you know, the natural world and all that. Like just staring at the ocean and just feeling like, you know, this is really what it comes down to. Every time I go out in the water, I always feel like I could die. You know, I'm not like a yeah. good surfer by any means, but the ocean is always trying to kill you in so many different ways. And like that, feeling that that solitude and that, that living on the edge thing, that's coming through all the songs. So the wake is, you know, literally a wake up call. It's also the wake is, you know, what you do when someone dies and you're, we, you know, everyone's grieving um, and sort of sharing stories. Um, it's also just the wake of the water. The wave is, you know, is, is the wake. Like it's, it's the, the, the the waves, the tide, the yeah. rhythm. So we just thought that that all kind of came together in that. And that painting that we used the album cover, that was actually um, painted by uh, Scott, our drummer's wife, Rachel oh. Zanerald. And uh, it's just, I just love that painting. And I just thought, like, that is what I'm looking at. Like, when I'm looking at the water, it's like kind of the birds, the sky, the ocean. And so, you know, all the songs have like this sort of um, common theme of isolation and um, waking up to a world that everything is upside down and backwards and you don't know what's going on and, and you're just sort of like trying to find your way back to like that one thing that you can hold on to, that one truth. And there's lots of relationships in there, lots of stuff about death in there. It's like, you know, it's all in there. The day I decide to leave Give them knives and feed them meat If I disappear complete Will there be your face to beat? On an ocean far from here Give them guns and drink their beer This time 
your band history? Because I remember you in El Terrible as well. Yeah, um, El Terrible is sort of my stage name. Uh, it was my nickname when I was growing up. I, uh, I worked at a sizzler, and um, all the cooks, I was a waiter, and all the cooks there used to make uh, tacos in the back. And they had made their own salsa. It was so incredibly spicy that really nobody would eat it, even though they just kind of made it just to show off. But I would always eat it, and I never had a problem with it. I thought it was amazing. I wanted more. So then they nicknamed me El Terrible because it never gets too spicy for El Terrible. Oh, okay. So that's where that name came from. We did this record, and um, we got picked up by Breakup Records, and people kind of liking it. And so we started to do some shows under that name. It's a slightly different band. Um, same drummer as Fake Your Death, Scott. Um, but we had some different members. And um, the, uh, we, you know, we, we kind of played around and, and for about a year under that name. But there's a, a professional wrestler in Mexico named El Terrible. And we were having a lot of problems um, on social media. People kept confusing us for him or him for us or something. And we were getting a lot of weird posts on our, you know, our Facebook page and whatnot. And it got to the point where um, we just needed to take it down. Like, it just wasn't, it, like, nobody could search us out. It would, all the stuff would come up for wrestling. It was just, it was strange. So um, we just stopped performing under that name all together. And then I started working on the Take On Death record. So, so really, El Trible was just sort of like a side project. But um, we are going to re-release that L3 Blay record with some new singles that we recorded that we never released. And that's going to come out in March. Oh. Um, and we're going to do it. We're going to do it as we're going to play those songs as Fake Your Own Death. So it's going to be that album really didn't really get out that far. Like kind of kind of fizzled. So I wanted to kind of repackage it with some new songs and, and, and get it out so that people can... Um... Finally, I want to play Throw Like a Girl. Where did this song come from? And this is also on your album, The Wake, which you'll, you'll have to also tell us where to yeah. find The Wake. Where can people buy The, buy the Wake and, and help support you so, as a band? Yeah, thanks. So it'll be out, you know, everywhere uh, digitally on the 14th. So, you know, iTunes and whatever the hell. <laughs> but the uh, um, it's also on our um, on our website, you know, on our Bandcamp. So you can, that, that way, the money goes directly to us, which is awesome. So that's the fourteenth. You can hear some songs streaming right now on it. Um, and um, "Throw Like a Girl" is uh, one of the last songs I wrote for this record. And um, the um, the concept really came from something I was mentioning earlier about like just waking up one day and feeling like everything is opposite day <laughs> you know like the uh, person put in charge of the Department of Energy is the guy who said he would get rid of it if he ever became president <laughs> um, Rick Perry you know, putting the person in charge of the Department of Education who's never gone to public school and thinks that schools need to have guns in order to protect themselves from bears um <laughs> You know, Donald Trump saying he is absolutely the, um, the the biggest feminist in in the world, and you know, she has more respect for him than anybody else. And yet, he says he finds his daughter very attractive. So I, I don't, there's there's some strange things happening right now, and um, I uh, just kind of have this line: um, "Cry like a boy and throw like a girl." And it really is kind of a little bit of a reflection of uh, the Cures, Boys Don't Cry mm. idea of, um, you know, like we are playing these roles, all of that, the, these pre prescribed sort of societal roles that um, we've been more or less told that, you know, if we don't fit into these categories, that um, somehow we are outside of society or, or we are in the way of society. And um, this whole, you know, all the lyrics are meditation on like all the gray areas, and you know, and, and of course, you know, I, I'm writing this the same time as this North Carolina law comes out that says that you people can't go into the bathroom of their choice mm -hmm. if their uh, biological gender is not the same one that they actually um, naturally feel that they fit, and. Um, so there is some of that in there too. So, so there's something literal going on, and something, uh, you know, that's a metaphor. But the, you know, the whole song is basically waking up and like everything you thought was one way is now the complete opposite of that. 
and how do you go on living you know after a, a lifetime of thinking that things work a certain way and now, now it's completely opposite take my skin my guitar knows everything dead man counting sheep close the shutters pretend to be scratches on a cell but the truth won't sell itself Sometimes a man is a bona fide lie that can never be found out Changing faces, changing names to destroy our doubts to have the wonderful Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, and the brewmaster. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye!